David Vizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. In this episode 86, I am going to continue my endeavors for the Mission Impossible 318 project. Those who've been following this will realize that I've been on a mission to reduce reciprocating mass of the pistons and rods such that we can make a worthwhile contribution to lightening the crankshaft. Now, anything we take off the mass of the pistons and the little end of the rod means that we can take more than that off the crankshaft if we take it off in the right place. And that is about 45 to 60 degrees away from dead opposite the crank journal. Well, we've done a pretty good rod lightning exercise. Now it's time to look for a piston, which is going to hopefully save us some weight. My first two calls were to Icon and DSS. Now, I called DSS and uh, I just want to say it was only a short while in before I mentioned that it, this was for a St. Jude's deal and they volunteered the Pistons, right? So there's another company that's in quotes, socially responsible. Now, I don't have a sample of their Piston because they offered to make a custom set. And I knew that these at around a grand a set were going to be out of our budget. But let me tell you about the piston anyway, because for those of you who've got Chevrolet engines, they do make a lightweight one. And if you've got a project that you want to have a totally custom piston, DSS is a great company to go to. A thousand dollars for a totally machined piston to your spec is not very expensive. Here's a piston DSS made for me for a turbo small block Ford. Notice the X pattern on the skirt. This is a patented uh, deal for DSS and what it does is essentially pump oil from the bore to the pan. Its unique feature is that it will pump oil out through the drain holes in the ringland going down the bore and pump them out the bottom when it goes up the bore. So the ring kind of acts like it's a um, sort of poor one-way valve. Does this work? You betcha. Now, I did do a dyno test on a set of pistons that went from no grooves to grooves and there was a slight increase in power. I'll get around to posting that test sometime in the future. Okay. Let's get down to something that we can afford here. What we need to do is to find a piston that is lighter than this and will give us more compression. Now this is a flat top with no cutouts in it. So any valve cutouts are going to be something of a problem. Also the compression height, that's the distance from the center of the pin to the top of the piston is taller so that this piston comes fairly close to the top of the block. Now, here's what I would do if I was going to use these pistons. I would take about 25 to 30 thousandths off the crown that will still leave enough valve cut out for us to put in a fairly big cam. And then I would deck the block to have this piston come about 10 out. That would give us approximately 12, about 12 to 1. Now, if you want more compression, then we have this piston from KB. It is the KB399. Now, with a, a dome like this, this piston will, if we get the uh, chamber volume, down to the uh, 56 or 58 cc shown in episode 81 we can just about get 
a 13 and a half to 1 compression. Now that all sounds good. Now let's look at the negative aspects here. Let's look at this KB piston here. That's 757 grams. 39 grams less than stock. Not a big weight saving. So we have to consider whether we want the weight saving or the compression. Now, I did say we were going to shoot for 10.5 to 11 to 1. So let's say you might want to do something different to us. Now here's your route to more compression, but a heavier piston. Now let's look at the KB flat top piston. That's KB 167. 707 grams. It's upside down, right? 707 grams. And it saves us 89 grams. So that's starting to look like a good bet. I did say that I'd take 25 to 30 thousandths off the top here. And then machine the block so that the pistons came 10 out. Now, why am I doing that? What it does is it moves this ring nearer the crown of the piston. It gets rid of about 30 thousandths of this crevice volume we have here because this diameter is smaller than this one. So that's worth power. I'm guessing it's probably about 5 horsepower. Also, it's going to lighten the piston by probably another three grams. So we're gonna save maybe 92 grams. Then I would machine the deck of the block so that this piston came out the bore by about 10,000. So what are the downside to these KB pistons? Well, rings. These are 5 64th strings with a 3 16th here. This is old school stuff. However, there is a raft of these springs still in production and they're inexpensive. Now, this is a time when inexpensive may, for you, overrule performance. These 5 64th rings do not allow the engine to produce its best power. However, that, for the price, is quite a minor deal. That doesn't mean they won't make power. They will. It just won't be quite as good as the thinner rings we see on the forge pistons. This piston and block skimming move will, with a typical Felpro gasket of 39 40 thousandths, give us a piston to deck clearance of 28 to 30 thousandths. Plenty of room. These pistons are not going to hit the heads for the simple reason that we have a very stout block and crank. I haven't tried it, but I'm pretty sure we could drop that down to around 22 thousandths if the piston was a good fit in the bore. But I'm not going to try going there until I've actually tried going there. Now we're going to look at the Icon forged pistons. We're going to check the equivalent of the two pistons in the KB range that we've just looked asset. at. The principal asset of these forged pistons and their 2618 alloy is that they are a lot tougher. They're also lighter. They're also designed with high performance more to the forefront. So we see quite a few advantages. First, the rings are a 16th, 16th, 3 16th design. So that would be good, especially if you used a top ring with a total seal ring. You just buy one set of rings, top rings, and that'll save you a bunch of money. The other rings, Hastings for the second and oil control ring that will do the job well. Now, let's look at the weight. Here we have a big advantage over the hyper-eutectic pistons. Let's check it out. Here is our flat top piston. Note, 
703 grams. 93 grams less than stock. By the time we skim the top, that could be 96 grams less. Very worthwhile saving. And if we used a lightweight pin, we right. could be looking at 110 grams. That's a bunch to save off the weight. However, by adopting the piston skimming routine that I talked about with the KB pistons, we can, by taking 25 to 30 thousandths off the top of this piston, achieve a compression ratio pretty much around 12 to 1. Not too shabby. Now, that's going to reduce the valve cutouts. You'll be just fine as far as valve to piston clearance is concerned. If you are looking for that higher compression, from the dome piston that I can offer, then we are going to save 57 grams. These weigh in at 739. This is a piston I strongly recommend using the lightweight pin with. Making a choice of piston for our project is not necessarily quite as straightforward as it may seem. The piston that you use may be different to the piston I use and both of them will be justified. Now let's take your choice. Let us say you're trying to keep the budget down on this and you aren't going to go past about 400 horsepower. Then I would recommend purely on cost that you use the KB piston, whichever one suits your uh, needs as far as compression goes. Now, we could use that one, but by the time I got to the end of where I'm going for this build, I am going to run out of capacity with those pistons. So, I am going to use the forged pistons, right? That is so that I don't break pistons at the end when we're probably close to 450 horsepower, maybe a bit more. So, that's why there's the difference. Now, as for the price difference, the forged pistons are going to be about $350 more. Now, we've been doing all this lightning here on pistons and rods and pins, etc., so that we can cut the bob weight that's required, which means the excess metal that we need to remove from the system is in the crankshaft. The idea there is that we can cut both windage and moment of inertia. Question now is just how much can we take out of that crank? Was all this effort worth it? Let's take a look and see. I'm going to start here by explaining the bob weight. This is the weight that goes on the big end journal when a crank is balanced. It is meant to represent the mass of the connecting rod and piston assembly. Now, we can see that one end of the rod, the big end, is rotating. But the other end of the rod is reciprocating. The, to get uh, a neutral balanced crank, that is not overbalanced or underbalanced, the formula is twice the rotating mass plus one reciprocating mass. So this means you need to know the weight of the, either end of your rod. When we check out the weights, we get 20, 90 grams for the stock rod. And our rod, and I'm looking down at my pad here, our rod and piston, that's using the Icon Forge flat top piston, comes out at just over 1800. Now, let's look and see what kind of mass of iron that represents. In terms of weight, we're saving 280 grams 
per bob weight. Now, we've got four bob weights, so our total savings comes to four times 280. That would be uh, 280, 560, 1,120 grams. Now you may wonder what 1,120 grams of steel looks like. Well, I'll show you. We've saved that much on our bob weights. That's a substantial amount. If we took all the metal off directly opposite to the big end journal, that's about the center of the counterweight, then we would expect to take about two and a half pounds off the crankshaft. So our total reduction in weight would be five pounds. However, take a look at this diagram. Let's assume we have four counterweights, roughly of the pattern shown here. Assuming that the radius of the counterweight is appropriate, then we have to take the equivalent of 280 grams off at point A. Let's say the crank was 20 grams light at the big end. Then we would have to take about 20 grams off at point A to bring the crank into balance. Now let's stop and consider what it is we're trying to do here. We are A, trying to balance the crank and B, we are trying to reduce its windage and mass to the maximum extent all that rod and piston lightning will allow. Taking metal off at point A does not serve our purpose very well. What we need to do is to take metal off as far from that point as possible around the counterweight. To equal the effect of 10 grams taken off at point A, we'd have to take something like 17 grams combined from the two points indicated. So we are gaining the advantage of 70% more material off. Now, We've still got another ace up our sleeve here. If we take metal off the crank nearer the center of the crank, we can achieve some lightning there and maybe a little bit better windage. So at the end of the day, this crank will probably lose about five pounds and have much better windage. I'm sure there's plenty of you just can't wait to see what I've done to the crank. Have I done it yet? No. I've got seven more of these to do yet, and they are time consuming. So you're going to have to wait a while for me to show you how I did the crank. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe. Those subscriptions help me a great deal. And have Ultimately, they will help St. Jude's because we'll have that bigger audience that we can base our raffle on. Thank you for watching.